still be as clutch as ever. Brandon Cooks can still be as clutch as ever. Their um, their fragile feet. <laughs> this fragile good feet, fragile feet. Stay on the run. Like he, like he been. So I'm gonna talk bad about him for the next couple of days, and hopefully, from from my lips to um, from my lips to his ear. <laughs> also, that um, the the tandem of Kobe Selena and uh and and Josh Hill, they can get it together. All right, good, good, Professor. Uh, see that you're back in the queue. Uh, tell me, what are some of your X factors for the game? I think turnovers and avoiding turnovers on offense, and if you can get some on, be more opportunistic, opportunistic on the defensive side, like we've doing, been doing nine turnovers in six games. That also is the aid in getting the ball back into Drew Tan and. Um, you said it earlier, uh, we can continue with the two-headed tandem of the running game, which will also open up the passing game even more for Drew. You know, those are the keys. Just keep doing what you've been doing, you know, the last couple of weeks. I think that's the winning formula for the Saints. Well, we have not had a winning performance against the Broncos for a long, long time, they said. Mm, right. It's, it's been a very, it's, it's a very, very, in fact, it's, I can't even remember it's been so long since the 90s. Yeah, I think 1994 I mean, I or something like that. <laughs> Golly. It's been a while. Man. It's been a while, but keeping in mind that we only play them like every four years, but still. Yeah, I don't think the Saints have beaten the Broncos since any time in this century. Mm, interesting interesting all right guys um i concur with what you guys are saying but the saints are going to have to watch the turnovers and we're going to have to really continue with the ball control um we've got to do a better job right now the saints offense is first in the league our defense is ranked 30th in the league uh we dropped a couple spots due to uh kaepernick's performance on Last Sunday, uh, the Broncos defense is rated number four in the league. Uh, they have a passing game that's rated 25th and their rushing attack is 23rd. So the, our defense can really hold those guys and give our team some extra possessions. I, I feel good about what our offense can possibly do against their defense, especially since uh, they have a couple key players pieces in their defense that are ailing at this time so let's see how we're able to uh come through it uh the broncos are at six and three so i made a mistake i gave them an extra loss maybe i'm just uh putting it out there in the universe <laughs> that they're gonna have another loss um and the saints are four and four and the game is going to be televised on cbs with jim nance in the his house so that should be pretty good to see for the new orleans saints all right man we got a short short show tonight um i do want to ask you guys a couple of quick questions um based upon Richard Sherman's situation. Did you guys have a uh, chance to see what happened when he ran into the kicker? But it was a legal play because he had his hand on the ball. Oh, yeah, I watched that. But it is, I don't want to talk about the play. I want to talk about what Prater's wife said. Yeah. yeah. And Probably. she texted, right? Uh, tweeted. She tweeted. Okay, so she tweeted that and she had a picture of a i guess it was a bull castrating uh cool. device that they, they use on the farms or something and she made yeah. reference that he should be castrated okay uh, you know and she couldn't understand why people took it as an you know, offense she thought it was being light and protecting her husband but People took it as a racial slight as well, especially, you know, 
you talk about a, a young black man and that's what slave owners used to do to slaves back in the day, castrate. So any thoughts there? Well, this is the first time hearing about it, but I'm just going to say based on um, other things, other quarterbacks, other football players, wives have said on social media and things like that. I just want to send a message out to all NFL players. Keep your wives off social media as far as it pertains to your career. I mean, evidently a lot of these um, ladies don't know what to say. Uh, you know, I mean, I can remember the um, after the second time uh, – What's the name of that team with the, the, the ones that cheat to win the Super Bowls? What's the name? The Patriots. Um, after the second time when when, when the um, Giants beat them, um, somebody I think it was um, Brady's wife had something to say about um, had something to say about Manning, you know, and it was just ridiculous. It, it seems to me, you know, just keep your wives off of social media as it as it pertains to your career because. You know, they're, they're, they're messing things up for you and your career, and you're the one who has to go into the locker room and look at the rest of these guys around the league and everything else. Keep your wives, tell them to just keep your career out of their mouth, please. Hmm. Okay, good, good. I know Richard Sherman didn't pretty much care for her apology. He said that was a little B, you know, BS, he says. So, but anyway, uh, right now. Richard Sherman always has something to say about somebody anyway. I mean, it's not like he's the nicest, the, you know, most polite guy in the NFL. All you right, don't think so? so? so oh, oh, come on. <laughs> the, things he, the, the things he said about Crabtree in the past, you know, uh, at least, but at least the two of them get to face off on the field and, and settle it as men. Uh, you know, mm. but. When, when now that you know, now that the tables are turned and somebody saying something about you, though it may have may be construed as racist, uh, at the same time, you know, you said some stupid things yourself, dude. So, you know, check yourself. Look in the mirror when you point your finger at somebody. You got three more pointing at yourself. Check so yourself you. before you wreck yourself, because talking about others is bad for your health. All right, guys. <laughs> Y'all are kind of slow tonight. Oh, no, I, I, I caught it, bro. I caught it. All right. All right, guys. Uh, the Saints are looking good. Uh, the odds, playoff odds have increased for the New Orleans Saints. Now they are projecting the Saints will go 8-8. Eight and eight. They have a 15% winning the division. They have a 34% chance of making the playoffs. And still, they're at that dubious 1% chance of winning the Super Bowl. Can we overcome those odds? Can we get over the edge? Or are we on the verge of winning on a consistent basis in the New Orleans Superdome on Sunday? All right, guys. Um, we made some transactions. Uh, we picked up a couple of the, that tight end that played for the Broncos, and we Silo. We picked up Shiloh as a special teams player, man. Shiloh Kale. You know, he hasn't been around in a long time. And they also picked up Packers linebacker Sam Barrington uh, to be off in the special team side as well. And um, the tight end we picked up, his name was John Phillips, and he played for the Broncos. All right, and right now the Saints did cut Brian Dixon, put him back on to the team's practice squad as well. Do the Saints win? Remy, what's your p- prediction? Uh- it's, it's been working for me the past um, month. I'm going to keep it up. Saints lose. Prove me wrong. Okay. <laughs> Dave, what's your prediction? <laughs> I'll make predictions. What's your thoughts? We'll put up <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, Dave is not going to be one of the uh, posters out there. So, <laughs> <No>. <laughs> Professor, what's your <laughs> It's work. It's work. So it's work. So <laughs> it's, it's working. All right. I'm going to stick to it. Who, who am I to try to uh, break through the 
the um, what works. So go ahead, Professor. What's your thoughts for the game on Sunday? I won't follow my brother and my sister. Oh, I Lord. I, I don't <laughs> think I'm going to game because I was 0-3, so I'm going to keep with working. I have no prediction. I just hope and pray they win. <laughs> All right. So I will break it. So I believe the Saints are going to win 40 40- Three, two, seventeen. I'm gonna go there. Forty-three, seventeen. What are y'all talking about? I, I, I made a prediction on, on Denver's defense, Kyle. Really? Forty-three to seventeen. Oh my goodness! I'm sticking with I it. A, I made a prediction. What's your prediction? Uh, I'm gonna predict the Saints lose. Saints lose. Okay. That proved me wrong. Remy Damas, go back home. So. <laughs> <laughs> All right. We need Remy Damas to show up. Guys, uh, it's been a good night uh, for us to hang out. Uh, Let's just have a good game on Sunday. Drew? 43-17. Yeah, 43-17. That's my thought. Kyle's expecting him to win bigly. Bigly. If if I can win, if I had took – the U.S., I believe the Saints can do it as well. All right. That, so. must, that, that must seem Vaughn Miller and DeMarcus Ware are going to get hurt in this game and mysteriously not going to play. <laughs> well, you heard Remy hire Tanya, Tanya Harden. <laughs> so, I mean, we're good, right, Rem? We got it. We got it, we baby. We got we it. <laughs> All right, Drew. Let's see if Drew can add on to his 2,689 yards. Mark Ingram is leading the team at 497 yards rushing, and Brandon Cooks is leading the team at 596 yards rushing. I saw an interesting stat. One last thing before we get off here. Uh, the past three weeks, Michael Thomas has caught 21 out of 27 targets to him for 266 yards and two touchdowns. Wow. This kid is on a rookie of the year type of performance. Unfortunately, Dak Prescott, as well as Ezekiel Elliott, are doing very well for the Cowboys. So we shall see how the next eight games translate for him on the field. But we are having some great performances from him and I think we 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 got some really something really special in Michael Thomas. All right, guys, thank you so much, Saints like, News Crew. Before we go ahead, we cut off. Would you like a um? Would you like a, a visit? A quick visit from Remy Thomas. Remy Thomas, can you please visit us? Okay, Remy Thomas, this is Remy Thomas. Okay, let me, let me let me make a quick prediction here. Ooh. <laughs> Provided that the Saints win this week, when they play the Falcons again Remy, 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 Remy. in January, the Jason, winner of Jason, that Jason. game will be the winner of the NFC South. Boom. Oh. All right. I like oh, that. I can't be responsible. I'm back. I'm back now. I can't be responsible for anything Remy Dama says. <laughs> I, I, go in, I go into a trance. I don't even remember what I said. <laughs> you said you were going to give me $500, man. That's what you said. Yeah. Anything Remy Donald said. If he offered you some money, you got you to gotta get it from him. <laughs> <laughs> All right, guys. Thank you, Diva. Thank you, Rim. Thank you, Professor. Uh, remember, guys, go check us out on www.saintsnews.net for all your Saints news across the internet. And also you can check us out on Twitter at Saints News as well as on Facebook at Saints News. This is Kyle T. Mosley with the Professor Derek Craig Stevens as well as the professional Remy Jones and the diva Sharita Batiste. Uh, Hi, Remy. Oh, and guys, don't forget, I think this is the start of the prep playoff season good games are going to be out there um some good battles i think st august playing this weekend too right rim st august playing 35 is in it man so yeah let's just hope they both make a good run yeah 35 got spanked last week by car <laughs> really bad and i watched that game and man car has a very impressive team they're ranked number two behind neville 
Uh, but let's see at 35, I think they're 